the Holy Ghost spoke with me and said that I should minister along the principle of possessing divine health. There is a pathway. There is a way. There is a road. And along that road, there are guidelines, much like a highway has a speed limit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Divine health will render your hospital visits unnecessary. Divine health will render your prayer for healing reduced to just your inner voice. You won't even have to open your mouth to pray for your body to be healed. Divine health is a realm of God. Your body was created to repair itself. There is a way, saints, to maximize and lay a hold of divine health within the realm of eternal life. So it is included with eternal life. The Bible says, so to the Spirit of God, you will reap eternal life. Imagine a minister, a pastor, a prophet, some servant of the Lord who is experiencing sickness in their body, but they're praying for others to be healed. They consistently see other people healed, but they themselves are struggling to secure it for themselves. Number one, that reveals that their own commitment to understanding spiritual things is not that strong. It doesn't matter how anointed you are. It matters, do you understand the order of God's word? Do you understand what God's word has to say about it? Let's say that minister seen, you know, very many healings. They're praying for everybody healing the sick. Keeps breaking out like clockwork. You know, sickness is healed, sickness is healed every time, every time, every time, every time. Okay? Because God is faithful. Right? God is what? Faithful. So he's not going to lose faithfulness because a vessel doesn't understand some of his principles. Does that make sense? When a minister is communicating the presence of God, he's communicating the presence of a faithful person that always wants to bring results. So just because you see supernatural manifestation of healing and deliverance does not guarantee that the vessel that conducted that is well put together. That same minister who's constantly seeing healing, deliverance, miracles, all that kind of stuff, in their private life, they still have to pray for their own body. They still have to cover their own body and mind and whatever the symptoms are showing. Maybe they even have to pay for doctor's visits, depending on their mentality when it comes to the Word of God, right? So it just depends on how far has a person built themselves. Just contemplate the path of the Lord Jesus. For 30 years, Okay, three whole decades, he was not in ministry. There was no ministry coming out of his life. Some religious scholar would say, but at 12 years old, he spoke to the Pharisees. Let me tell you something. That wasn't ministry. That was Jesus manifesting his purpose, okay? And the Pharisees that heard him speaking were blessed. But let me tell you something. That was not what you call ministry. That was conversation, all right? He said, didn't you know I should be about my father's business? He said that at 12 years old to his parents. So Joseph and Mary were actually corrected. His parents were corrected because their stewardship of his life up to that point was a certain way. And God wanted to speak with them by Jesus as their physical responsibility, but as his son. So imagine someone comes to Jesus Christ, becomes a minister, has a position in a local church, and they're seeing constant miracles because the church they belong to isn't against the supernatural. But they themselves are still fought and bound and vulnerable in some areas. That minister does not understand divine health. This is not condemnation. This is just truth, all right? But a lot of people may not know what to do with truth. You might think I'm being rude. You might think I'm being arrogant, but I'm not. I just want to draw out a simple principle that the Word of God contains. Any promise of God that does not root itself in your spirit will never prevail in your mind. Any word of God, any promise or truth of God that does not prevail in your mind could never prevail in your physical body. The mind is the police officer of the body and the spirit is the deputy over the mind. Spirits communicate to spirit, but spirits also influence the mind. Hallelujah. Third John verse number two says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in hell, even as thy soul 
prospered. So you see that it's talking there about physical health because it connects the realm of health to the soulish realm. The soul that prospers is the soul that has the word of God in it prevailing. So that would include humility under the principles of God's word, the order of God's word, the precedent of God's word, all right? You don't just pray for divine healing and then it suddenly locks into your life. It is a walk. The word prosper means to increase, and that can be in different areas of your life. You can prosper financially. You can prosper in your relationship. You can prosper in your academics or in your intelligence. You can prosper in wisdom. You can prosper in the prophetic. You can, there's so many ways that a person may prosper. I desire it for you. So let's just notice the spiritual reality behind the scripture. If it says, I wish above all things, or I will for you, I, I, you know, God says, I know the thoughts that I think toward you. So I believe this is God's voice. I believe the word of God is God's voice to us. You know, the Holy Ghost can talk by the word where it's saying, I really want this for you. Okay. Another version says, I pray that you may prosper in all things. Now the word may includes you could miss out. And let me just do this to be wise, you know, and to be roundabout in my teaching of this really quickly. Not everything that God has promised will come to fruit in your life. Why not? Because can he release it to you? Are you qualifying? Are, are, are you fit? Now see, people don't like that language, qualifying. Because in the world, it sounds like you gotta, you know, you qualify to get a loan. You qualify to buy a car. You qualify to rent something. You qualify to go into debt, okay? But we're not talking about that right now. We're talking about spiritual things. And qualifying is that of the heart. See, someone just may not understand. God wants to trust you with what he gives to you. Hallelujah. I'm a father. I have two children, and they're beautiful children. Ten-year-old son, soon-to-be four-year-old daughter. When they get of age, I'm not just going to buy them a car when they're 14 years old. Are you kidding me? That would reflect so ignorantly on my fatherhood. I would have to abide by what you call the law of the land. When can they start doing driving classes? You know, I would have to take them out, train them, right? So th th there's a process. Amen, somebody? That th There's a process. You know, I, I said in a recent live stream that when God is releasing miracles, deliverance, healing, when he's doing that, those miracles actually teach you. I don't know if somebody's aware. Those miracles actually have a teaching job. They're supposed to be training up and teaching your heart. So that's how God will tutor you, is by the supernatural, with his hand upon you, speaking with you. But are you focused? Are you paying attention? Are you focused? See, are you in alignment? Or do you veer off in your mind some kind of way? The Holy Ghost can minister as if you were enrolled in a school. But what happens when you don't pay attention to your curriculum? What happens when you don't adhere to what's being taught. Or worse off, you try to take someone else's notes to pass the test, see? Because then you're reaching. Then you have burned out your own diligence, and now you wanna just use somebody else's intelligence to get to the result that you're looking for to pass the test and go on and advance and prosper, see that? An inheritance gotten in a hasty way will not be blessed in the end. So is divine health your inheritance as a child of God? Yes, it is. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the children of God. Hallelujah. We don't even fully see what we're meant to be. It's massive. It is so powerful. What God has intended unto his sons. 